All right, what is up, guys? This is Ivan again from BrainyBus.com. And uh, this is going to be part two in our tutorial series on controlling a stepper motor using a ro rotary encoder like this one here. Uh, in our first uh, part, we used the uh, simple and popular uh, little uh, motor here, the uh, 28BYJ48 it's had with its own control board. So we're not going to use that anymore. That was just to uh, get us started on controlling steppers. So we're going to move this guy aside here. And what we're going to use instead in this uh, second part tutorial is this uh, NEMA 17 size motor. Uh, now this is more of a stepper motor, meaning it's faster, it's got more torque, and uh, we can play around with this one a lot better. So without uh, wasting too much time, what we're going to do today, we're going to use the little controller here, the easy driver. This is version 4.4 that we have here. And this is going to make the connections from our Uno to the stepper motor right here. Um, the code is going to be pretty much the same. So basically what we're going to do as we turn this, the rotor encoder, the stepper will turn the other way. And when we press, it'll go back like we did in our part one. But as you will see, this guy will respond a lot faster. So all the parts are pretty much the same. We've got our motor, we've got our rotor encoder, we got the Uno with the um, easy driver. We're powering the Uno using our 18650 batteries right here. And we're powering the uh, stepper motor using a 12 volt one amp. Uh, these motors that uh, we sell are great because they don't use a lot of current. Uh, the maximum that I saw on these motors was point for six amps. So they're very easy to drive and they give good torque. The code is a little bit different because we're not going to use any libraries today to uh, interface with the easy driver. We're going to write our own code. And in the next tutorial, then we're going to use a library that will give us more flexibility to actually control this motor, like acceleration, speed, and all that stuff. So let's go here. Let's go see the uh, code. And then we'll be back and test it out right here. All right, guys, so here we're on the code. We're going to go uh, pretty fast because some of this code is the same that we saw in part one. Uh, what's different is the easy driver connection. So this is def we're defining here the pins that the easy driver is connected to the Uno. And here are the same variables we're using for the interrupt. Rotary encoder pins, same thing. Uh, stepper position to store the, um, where the stepper is moved. And the steps to take, this variable actually controls uh, how, much, um, how much steps the uh, motor is going to take every time we do a, l a click on uh, a rotation click on the encoder. So if you increase that, the motor will move faster with every turn. And you could put it to one, so it goes very slowly. And a variable to uh, determine the direction, if we're going clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, now here's the interrupt that we used in the last tutorial that actually when uh, you do a rotation it detects on the rotary encoder runs this little piece of code and actually then we know if we move clockwise or counterclockwise so then we're moving down to the setup so these are all the pin uh, they're all outputs on the uh, easy driver then we do a digital write, a digital write to the sleep pin on the easy driver to wake it up to make it to make the motor active. And here we configure the type of steps on the easy driver. So you got two pins, MS1 and MS2. Depending if you put them low or a high, you will do an eighth of a step, a quarter step, half step, full step. So basically the motor will move more or less depending on how these pins are configured. For our tutorial, we're configuring them low, low, so that equals to a full step. Then we set more pins as some are input. So these are for encoder. Uh, we put the encoder switch on the inc rotor encoder high because we want to use the pull-up resistor inside the Uno. And then we attach the interrupt to actually detect when we rotate. And here's our main loop. So this is pretty much the same thing. We're checking if the uh, button on the switch on the rotor encoder is pressed. If it is, we're checking if the stepper position is already at zero. If it's already at zero, we don't want to you know, move the motor anywhere. If it's not, then we're checking if the position is bigger than zero or smaller than zero. If it's bigger, 
So we're doing a while loop, and stepper position is not equal to zero. So while it's not equal to zero, keep moving the stepper motor until it reaches zero, which is the origin where it started at. And then we do a for loop. So x equal one to step to take. Step to take is equal to four, so it's gonna do this loop four times. And then we do a digital right to the step pin high, a little delay, and low, that'll do a step. And we're repeating that four times because steps uh, to take is equal to four. So basically every time we move the rotary encoder, it's gonna do this loop four times. And then once it's done the loop, we're setting the stepper position is equal to stepper position minus step to take, so minus four. Uh, because we're going going counterclockwise. And we do the same thing for the other direction, except at the end we do plus four to update the uh, motor position. And once everything is done here, basically what's happening is that the motor went back to zero, to the origin, so once all this movement has been done, at the end of the while, uh, when it gets out of the while loop, it sets the position to zero. Now this runs if rotation is detected. This is actually to move the motor every time we rotate the uh, rotary encoder. So if turn was detected, this is actually set inside the interrupt. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to put this variable to false so that uh, we did reset so it doesn't keep actually updating it. And then we decide which direction to move the stepper motor. If the rotation direction is true, that means uh, the more uh, we move the rotary encoder counterclockwise, so we're digital right uh, to the pin on the easy driver high, high equals any clockwise, and that's what we want in this case. And we do the same kind of loop here for a loop that we did to do the reset position of the motor, except this time uh, step to take is still equal to four, high, high, high and low, so we're moving one step, we're doing this four times, and then we're setting the position, step or position minus step to take. But at the end of that loop, we're not uh, doing the same thing, step or position equals zero, we're just letting it count up or down uh, because we're moving the motor and not resetting its position. And then if uh, rotation direction is equal to false, is not equal to true, basically, that means move the motor clockwise, so the only difference in this is that we're putting the pin to low, the direction pin on the easy driver, that means clockwise, doing the same movement here, and instead of a minus, uh, uh, minus step to take, we do plus step to take because we're moving clockwise. And that's it. So this part gets done when we rotate the uh, rotor encoder to move the motor clockwise or counterclockwise. And the first part here is when we click the switch. So basically this resets the position of the motor depending on what the stepper position variable is set to. So it's going to keep doing this until it's equal to zero. So there you go. That's the code for today in this part two. So we're going to upload that to the Uno and let's go check out the results. All right, so we're back and we already uploaded the code we were working on on the Uno right here. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give power to my easy driver, like so. And let me bring it a little bit closer so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I'm, then I'm going to power my Uno. And there we go. So everything's ready to go. So here's our motor. And I'm going to start turning my encoder. And as you see, it responds almost at the same time that I'm turning here. So compared to this little guy here, which uses basically a motor with gears to actually turn the shaft, so this guy doesn't respond as fast, this guy is very fast, as you can see. Now, in the code, we were using uh, four steps for each turn of these dials. So as I turn here, you see this is four steps on this motor, full steps. And it's still not a lot of uh, movement. And when I click, it goes back really fast. So there you go. So of course, these motors are a little bit more expensive, uh, but they're, you know, they're real uh, stepper motors. So they're at, they provide a lot of torque. They're very fast to respond. Like you can see here, it's almost at the same speed. And if I go all the way around, no one more. 
you see. And they're, they're very silent, too. They don't make a lot of noise. So there you go, guys. This was part two uh, using the NEMA, uh, a NEMA 17 size motor with a rotary encoder. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do, we're still going to be using the same parts, uh, but we're going to add more flexibility. So instead of writing our own code to interface with the easy driver, we're going to actually use a library. And we're going to be able to control the speed, acceleration, and a lot more stuff that uh, the library will enable us to do. Now, if you're interested in building this, I um, invite you to go to our site, brainybus.com. You'll find a tutorial page for this. All the connections, the schematics, uh, a lot easier to see than on video right here. And you can also download the code that uh, you just saw in this episode. And also, if you want to buy any of these parts, please you know, support us by going to our store, brainybus.com, and uh, you can, you'll find all the parts that uh, we do all our tutorial video with. So until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care. <laughs>